Hace un año el investigador en seguridad Dan Kaminsky encontró un serio agujero DNS que amenazó Internet. Nueve meses después de que saliera el parche, Kaminsky evalúa la situación actual en la conferencia Source celebrada en Boston. Well, I mean, the most important thing is obviously a lot of people patched, a lot of major networks never got attacked. These are good things. Uh, not so good things are that there are there is still a population that's still vulnerable. And uh, we have three researchers from Georgia Tech who are actually monitoring that population. And uh, there are confirmed attacks against these networks. They're not good. They're actually accelerating in pace. Um, it's remarkable we're seeing anything at all. I mean, this is an attack that is effectively written in disappearing ink. The attacker can say, I want to take this name for the next 45 seconds. And after 45 seconds, I want all evidence that I was ever here to destroy itself. Cuando se lanzó el parche para el agujero, Kaminsky no esperaba mucha cooperación por parte de los profesionales de TI, pero se llevó una grata sorpresa. To a lot of IT admins credit, most people got it. Most people, most large ISPs in the world now are protected. There are still some that aren't. You'll never get 100%. But you know, we expected 50% after a year, and we got about two thirds after a month. So. Uh, I'll definitely take that. No obstante, este experto en seguridad sigue pensando que aún hay grandes agujeros en la red. Um, I think there are other bugs of, of similar magnitude that are hard to fix. Um, you know, we were lucky in that we were able to do something about DNS using using source ports. Um, there really aren't any serious fixes for the BGP attacks that got discussed at the uh, middle to end of last year. Um, at the end of the day. People who are running ISPs anywhere in the world can hijack any other internet services traffic. And the core discovery from the DNS research was not, oh my god, we have to fix DNS. The core discovery was anything goes wrong in infrastructure, we're just not really set up to deal with it. So that's why my challenge has now become how do we actually fix authentication? How do we fix encryption? How do we get it so endpoints know who they're talking to so that when you have these infrastructure flaws, and there, there were four major infrastructure flaws found last year. These things are around. We need to figure out how to, in the real world, harden our endpoints against them. We haven't done that great a job of that, but I think we can do better with DNSSEC. Actualmente, el trabajo de Kaminsky se centra en cambiar la percepción de la DNSSEC. What my big challenge is right now, you know, we put out the fire. DNS was on fire. You said DNS sec, we're not talking about that because that's you know, the actual realistic ability to get that out in a crisis is just not there. If the fire's out, we can start talking about building codes. We can start talking about how to make systems that don't fail so catastrophically. The real challenge is so DNS sec is not something I'm a long term supporter of. I'm very new to it. No one is more surprised than I am that it's actually a pretty good idea. Um, There are operational considerations that have caused a lot of IT people to dismiss it. And they're not wrong because the operational layout of how you were supposed to deploy DNSSEC is a mess. And it's just how it is, it's the honest truth. But I think we can fix it. I think the protocol at its core is actually not bad. We're going to need to do some work on implementations to front load all the really hard parts. And so that's been my challenge for the last two months to actually really turn DNSSEC from something we all know we should do because, you know, it's good for us to something that can actually give us a way to bootstrap trust seriously in the real world with widespread deployments. From there, from there we can start talking about how we make actual software able to authenticate not just occasionally, but by default.